So now we're going to have a look at how to use um, random numbers in our Python program. They're going to be useful for things like games, so we might want to simulate the roll of a dice for example, or we might want to pick a random item from a list such as a day of the week or a name of a person within a class, and we'll have a look at examples on how to do that in a second. But also, uh, adding a little bit of randomness can make things a little bit more realistic. So for example, in Scratch, when I was looking at recursion, I wrote this program to demonstrate the idea to my students, which draws a binary tree. And as you can see, it draws a binary tree, um, but it does the same thing every time. So every time I run that program, I get exactly the same tree. It's not the most realistic looking tree either. It looks more like uh, broccoli or cauliflower or something. So I thought, well, what can I do to make that a little bit look a bit more like a tree? So I came up with a second version, and I just added a little bit of randomness as the branches were being drawn. And doing that gives me two benefits. First of all, it gives me a tree that looks probably more like a real tree. Um, but secondly, it gives me a slightly different tree every time I run the program. And this is how things like CGI films work. Sometimes you can see the extras in animated films and it tells you how they use randomness to make hair and grass and things like that look more realistic. And in this case, I've done that uh, to a tree. So it's the imperfections in things that make them look more natural. So you could use that idea um, as well in your programming. So um, if we want to generate a whole number, that's quite straightforward, but Python doesn't support um, natively random numbers, so we need to use a, a library. So I'm going to say from random import import uh, randint. Some people just say import random, but that then means you have to put random dot at the start of everything. So if I say from random import randint, that means I can just use the randint command on its own without that first part. Um, so what I can do is I can say die, if I want to simulate the roll of a dice. Randint takes two numbers, so it's very much like a rand between in Excel. I can say 1, 6, and then obviously I can print that. So that's giving me a 1. Next time I run this, it gives me a 2. So it's giving me a number between 1 and 6. Now that's a coincidence that it's giving me 1 and 2. Um, it's giving me a 6 this time. So um, I could go and tell you, tell you that um, obviously computers aren't very good at generating random numbers because as we know from our programming, uh, computers are only good at following rules and you can't have a set of rules to generate something random so they are in fact uh, something called pseudo random for, for purposes like this um, they're absolutely fine. Um, now I've mentioned previously um, about the need to store numbers so if I was um, inputting that information for example I wouldn't necessarily need to store it if I only wanted it to use it once or if that was a calculation I might want to um, I could do that calculation in place here. You need to be a little bit careful with uh, doing that with random numbers because obviously each time you use the random number you get uh, uh, each time you use the random function you get a different number so if I want to use that number twice I need to store that so um, obviously this is not a particularly um, good example but if I'd done that then those two occurrences of randint might give me or probably most of the time will give me different numbers. So you might you need to be a little bit careful uh, when you're using and comparing your random numbers to make sure you store it as you create it, otherwise it might change and affect your program. So that's that's fairly straightforward. You can use the um, we can use a number if we want to generate a, a whole num number like a dice throw. Uh, we can do that. If we want to have a random thing, then we can have um, something like this, so we could have, um, so in this case I'm going to use a tuple because it's not going to change, it's just for reference, so Tom, Dick and Harry, and then I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my random number as an index in that tuple, so I'm going to print, um, so my random number would be, so don't forget the positions within a tuple are uh, start from zero. So Tom is person zero, Dick is person one, Harry is person two. So I want a number between zero and two to represent people in that list. Now if I was going to change that list I could I could say um, len name minus one for example. 
oops, to uh, so it could cope with the different lengths of the names. And in fact, so that's a, that's a number that I've generated there. I'm then going to use that as an index into my name tuple. So that's a random number between naught and one less than the length of the list. So in this case, between naught and two. And I'm going to use that to indicate the position in the tuple of the name that I want. So if I run that, it gives me Harry quite a lot. Uh, but it is giving me other names. Now the thing about randomness is people quite often get suspicious if things cluster together. That's not an issue um, because it'd be more suspicious if it was cycling through Tom, Dick, Harry, Tom, Dick, Harry, Tom, Dick, Harry each time I ran the program. So the fact that it's clustering probably suggests that it is um, you know, relatively random. Um, so if I add some Nor names, um, Sarah, uh, Norma, and Dave. I don't need to change my program because it's using the length of the string. So now it should give me names from the whole length of that string. So that's useful if you want a whole number. Um, and quite often you, you can you know cope with the whole number or if you want you, you could if you wanted a, a number from 1 to 10. Uh, but you wanted a decimal, you could generate a number between 1 and 100 and divide it by 10 or something like that. So you can do numerical techniques to manipulate it. Now this is quite a, um, a friendly kind of function. Most programming languages have a function uh, more like this, which is available in um, Python, which is the random function. So if I run this now, oops, it helps, uh, helps if you spell, spell it correctly. So what random does uh, is it gives you a random number between naught and 1. And you can then scale this uh, however you like. And if you look at the, the uh, description below this video, you can see a link to a page where I go into that on more detail. This is how you do it in things like um, older versions of Excel. So random between is a relatively new uh, function. I think it came in uh, Excel 2007. Prior to that, you'd have a, the rand function, which generated a number from um, 0 to 1. Um, 0.9 recurring and um, basic and JavaScript and things generate random numbers in the same way so it's useful to be able to scale it but we can do the same thing so what you do is you multiply it by the number of values you want so I'm going to just say uh, I'm just going to call it um, let's call it die um, okay so now if I look at the value of die, the reason I've used a variable is to fix that value. Otherwise, it would keep changing each time I used random. So now if I multiply, so that's giving me a number from 0 to 1. So if I want a number from 0 to 6, I can multiply that by 6. So that would, um, that would give me a bigger number. And then I can round that down. using the int function and then so what that would give me is a number from 0 to 5 and then I could add 1 so that's basically the gist so if I do it over here I'm going to say die equals what I would do is I take my random number I would multiply it by the number of values that I wanted to generate so six options on a dice multiply it by six I would round that down and then I would add on the smallest value that I want. So the smallest number I'm going to get from a dice is 1. So as I said, look at the web page in the link below and you can see uh, an interactive example of this where you can uh, put in the size of the number and how many values you want and it will show you how it works. So if I um, print now die, we can see that basically it does the same as my previous dice program. It gives me a number from 1 to 6, albeit um, in, a, uh, in a slightly more complex looking way. However, the benefit of using random is that we can change the distribution. So if you're using randint, it, uh, the distribution of numbers is uh, linear, 
So it, it's equally likely to come from anywhere within the range. So if you do randing 1 to 100, you know, the number is as likely to be 1 as it is to be 99, for example. That's not always what you want. So when I was creating my um, this program here, I wanted to give um, students a feel for how big angles were. So I wanted to generate some random angles and then get the students to kind of um, estimate how big that angle would be. So 34 is it there okay and then 44 etc 316 okay but so I wanted numbers in the range 0 to 360 however I wanted um, it to be more likely that you would get a small angle okay so um, so 10 there we go and 34 so notice that even though that's a random number they're um, more likely to be in the lower range than in the higher range so we've only had this is only the second one higher than uh, 180 for example so how do we do that so you struggle to do that with randint however using random what you can do is you can uh, use a power or an index so if you think about it you've got a number from 0 to 1 if you square that it's still between 0 and 1 because 0 squared is 0 and 1 squared is uh, 1 and same as if you cube it and if you raise it to the power of 4, etc., it's still in that same range. However, the distribution changes because if you think about how, if you look, think of your, your cubic or your quadratic graph and, and the curve, um, or if you, if you write your random numbers, um, not random, if you write your square numbers out, they go uh, 1, 2, 9, 16, 25, so they get progressively further apart. So uh, the same is true of um, this here. So if I do. Um, if I take my random number from 0 to 1 and I square it before I do anything else with it, so I'm just going to put that in brackets to make it, should should square it first, but just to make it a bit more readable, I'm going to put some extra brackets in there. So it's going to square it first, and then it's going to multiply it by 6. So if I run this now, it should skew it towards the lower numbers, although it doesn't appear to be doing so far. Maybe it would be more obvious with a, a, a bigger number. And if I wanted, if I cubed it, it would exaggerate the effect even more. So if I raise it to the power of 10, maybe see what that does. Yeah, see, we're nearly always getting a 1 now. So raising the random number between 0 and 1 to a power changes the distribution. Obviously, if you wanted to distribute them towards the higher end, you could uh, do that and then subtract that from 1. So that would skew it towards the upper end of the random numbers. So that's a quick look at random numbers in Python. We need to import a library function either way. So either randint if you want a whole number, and that's probably the easiest way to do it, or random if you want to do it in the old school uh, multiplying and scaling it yourself uh, method. And have a look at the link below uh, for more detail on that.